In 2010, Cartoon Network started to get back upon its feet and began to air shows that launched the animation renaissance we are seeing today. Adventure Time, Regular Show, all different but amazing series, yet one that really broke the mold was Steven Universe. From mature themes to unconventional characters, this cartoon isn't afraid to turn gender norms upside down. But how do they do this without losing their audience? Well, I did my homework and found some examples that may prove a point. And I owe a lot of thanks to the Steven Universe Amino app for my research. Now, I mentioned Cartoon Amino in my Nickelodeon video, and after a few days of exploring, I discovered that there was a version of it for Steven Universe. We have to go deeper. When I do my research for videos, I like to ask people questions. I want to hear their perspective on the matter, and this was a good place to start. Through chats, news posts, videos, and more, I was able to gather information and learn a thing or two for this particular upload. And there also are some pretty cool people you can follow on the app. Like me. So go download the free app, follow my account, and weigh in on this poll that I created. Do you think that Steven Universe is appropriate for kids? Yes or no? Yeah, it's a weird question, but this cartoon tackles some pretty mature themes. And there are some people who believe that it has no place on Cartoon Network. Are they right or are they wrong? How do young audiences respond to non-traditional characters and topics in cartoons? How does Steven Universe present itself in a way that can convey a mature message but succeed as a television series? Is this cheeseburger backpack available as merchandise? Yes. For the other questions, we will have to take a closer look and see how Steven Universe challenges social norms. When it comes to a good book, movie, cartoon, or whatever, well, you gotta have good characters. They are the main course of the story and are the ones who move the plot forward. Let's start with Steven, the central protagonist of the show. He is a happy-go-lucky kid with a heart of gold. He is kind, friendly, and tries to see the good in everyone, no matter who they might be. Infused with the powers of his mystical mother, he goes on adventures with the crystal gems, garnet, pearl, and amethyst. Now, this is already out of the norm. When it comes to superhero shows, guys typically outnumber the girls, but not for this cartoon. Instead, females take the lead here, and it's Steven who must learn from them. First, we have Garnet. She is wise, calm, and very strong. In a way, she is the leader of the team, which, you know, makes sense when that person has future vision. Will America survive the elections? No. Aww. Okay. Pearl is the busybody mother hen of the group. She is smart, precise, and a bit over the top when it comes to doing things right. And the last member of the squad is the wild, free, and fun-loving Amethyst. Three super-powered gals who, on the surface, come across as pretty basic. The serious one, the nerdy one, the crazy one, and their innocent son. There is also a lion! I have been watching this show since it first aired, and to be honest, I wasn't too impressed with it initially. I mean, it was pleasing to the eyes, but the story and characters were kind of boring. But I stuck with it, and I'm so glad that I did. The show truly developed, and they did it in very unconventional ways. By the way, SPOILERS! Let's talk about the Crystal Gems again, and what they are really about. Garnet, Sirius, Stalwart, a pillar of strength, until she falls apart. Literally. At the end of Season 1, we find out that Garnet is actually a fusion of two other gems, Ruby and Sapphire. Now, fusion itself is a very important element of the show, and it takes many forms. But for these two, it is a relationship. It is trust. It is love. And that makes them very strong. Kind of rare to see two female characters share this type of relationship. And I'm quite certain it is what we think it is. Like, look at the thirst! Not only do we see two female characters share romantic feelings, but we also see them go through hardships. When it comes to classical entertainment and romance, we see the brave, strong man fight for the hand of his lady love, and they live happily ever after. Now, this isn't always 
always the case, but it's definitely the norm. But here we learn about the ups and downs between these two, how they are different but still fight to stay together, how they communicate and work things out. This is important for people, especially young viewers, to see. Relationships are not always two-dimensional. It's funny because it's a cartoon show. So it's refreshing to see something that's realistic. Let's take another look at Pearl. She might seem overprotective and come across as a naggy know-it-all, but there is a lot more to her than you think. She is actually a battle-hardened soldier and fought against the homeworld gems for the freedom of Earth. It was her and her leader, Rose Quartz, that liberated our planet and kept it safe from conquest. Pearl truly loved Rose. She fought for her and I'm quite certain she would have died for her. But the problem is... Greg, the man who Rose fell in love with. Pearl felt rejected. She could not understand why Rose picked him over her, but we see the story progress over time. Despite the animosity Pearl felt towards Greg, they eventually talked it out in season three and resolved their differences. She grew as a character. And now she's got a new girlfriend that looks just like Rose, hey -o! This cartoon is breaking social and gender norms left and right. Deep, complex emotions? Check. Characters sharing a romance that isn't strictly male and female? Check. Mother freaking GameCube! At this point, you might be thinking that this show is only focused on gay relationships, but that isn't true. As I mentioned before, Greg and Rose are a heterosexual couple, and their story is beautiful. And complicated. Like, I could make separate videos on all of my individual points, but I'm trying to keep this short and sweet. All you need to know is that these two deeply cared for each other, and that one of them is a rock. But it's a rock. I know it's a rock! Don't you think I know a rock when I see a rock? I've spent a lot of time around rocks! Kid entertainment has changed. It also provides some variety and representation for people in the audience. Children are not as dumb as we think they are, and they are completely capable of understanding mature themes. Case in point? Amethyst. I said that she was the wild one of the group, and that isn't entirely untrue. But her story takes her to dark places. We learn that she was artificially created and was designed for war. She broke away from that path and now struggles to find her true meaning in life. That is incredibly deep and profound. Life isn't easy and we aren't just going to instantly understand who we are. Sometimes you have to go through rough experiences and get there yourself. For kids, this is an invaluable lesson to learn. They are young, impressionable, and kind of unsure of themselves. Isn't it nice that they can see a cartoon character go through the same challenges and relate to it? And there are other moments in the show that tackle mature themes. Lapis and Jasper and the topic of consent. Amethyst and self-image and how a person can express their freedom and voice in different ways. Steven and Connie and how they face their anxiety and post-traumatic stress from previous battles. The point is, mature themes can exist in kid cartoons and it doesn't have to be heavy-handed. It does not have to be a public service announcement. This is crack. It can be utilized as part of the story and enhance the viewing experience. When I see the show explore the relationship between Ruby and Sapphire, I see a well thought out story. I see how the two interact with one another and grow from it. It just so happens that they are female in appearance. It doesn't mean that it defines who they are though and the show does an excellent job of representing that. In most shows, when there is a gay couple, it's so in your face about it. It's usually for comedic relief and it gives off the impression that gay characters are all about sex. So, do you like sex in the city? Yeah, it's an alright show. I wasn't talking about the show. Ooh! I'm nasty! But I don't see that with Steven Universe. I see legit relationships, and that is a nice change of pace, especially for a show that is primarily intended for kids. It proves that non-traditional characters can have an impact on the story in a profound way, and offer a different perspective for the audience.
The Nickelodeon Animation Podcast recently interviewed Lauren Faust and, I'm gonna butcher your name, man, I'm so sorry, Jorge R. Gutierrez, two accomplished and talented people in the animation industry. In both interviews, they spoke about representation in animation and how it's important to have variety. Girls, girls need to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, the Gina Davis Institute says um, if she can see it, she can be it. Yeah. Um, and I believe that. Girls, you know... Um, I read an article recently over the controversy over Ghostbusters, and this young woman was talking about how when she was 10, she would watch the cartoons that she loved. She was like me. She liked the boy cartoons. Right. And the girl, there was always one girl character, mm -hmm. and, you know, they were the, the roles that they had were so limited that when she was asked um, in middle school, I think, what she wanted to be when she grew up, she literally said secretary. Yeah. So that's why it's important for girls. Um, they need to know that they can do these bigger things. They need to know that they can be tough and strong. Again, I'm a kid in Mexico, and I admire Batman, and I admire Spider-Man. Yeah. And I go, why can't I admire someone who under the mask looks like me? Yeah. Because none of those guys look like me. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I would watch Super Friends, and I would go, well... Maybe the twins are Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> the Wonder Twins? Well, yeah. kind of. They're aliens. They then, were a little browner, but they're yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And, and same thing with you know with Star Wars. It was like, well, yeah. maybe Chewbacca is Mexican. <laughs> He's the closest we had. Chewie. Yeah, Chewie. I know lots Chewie. of Chewies. Not everyone in the audience is going to be the exact same. So it's nice to see characters that aren't exclusive to a particular demographic. A little girl can look at Garnet and say, hey, I can be strong too. It gives her someone to look up to. Now, I am not saying that every cartoon show has to conform to this formula and provide a slot for each and every demographic. We don't want to revive the Burger King kids, but it's nice to have variety, both in characters and maturity. When it's done right, the show can drastically improve. Like I said before, I didn't really care for the majority of season one of Steven Universe, but when it starts to go more in depth with the characters, well, things got interesting. It's funny how I've been going on and on about gender norms and how this show flips them upside down. But the thing is, the gems aren't even technically female or any gender for that matter. They are just rocks. Their body is like a projection of their thoughts and what they want to look like. So to humans, they appear as female, but technically, and according to the show's creator, they are non-binary. You want to know who else is a warrior race and has no gender? The Orcs from Warhammer 40k. Wait, what if the gems and orcs were created by the old ones and now they fight for the domination of the galaxy? That the homeworld gems took over Earth in order to protect it? That a war between the two species has been going on for countless millennia? Yeah, never mind. That's stupid. But yeah, social norms. Overall, the last few years have been pretty awesome for cartoons. There is so much variety, both in story and art. We don't have to have just one type of show. Steven Universe can have its mature themes and feature unorthodox characters because they know how to write a proper story. But not every show has to be that way. There's plenty of room for everyone. From the wackiness of Gumball to the mystery of Gravity Falls. Quality can take many forms and people can pick and choose what they like. Wait, Gumball's ending? I mean, I knew that Gravity Falls is over, but gosh, Gumball's awesome. Eh, at least we have Wander over Ya- Oh, wait, that ended too. Eh, I guess I'll watch regular sh- What? Last season? What's going on here? Cartoon Network, you're especially scaring me. You were the ones who kicked off this cartoon revival, and now your shows are coming to an end. Well, I mean, I guess it isn't all bad, right? It makes room for new things. Yuck. Eh, I'm sure they have some awesome stuff on the hero. Oh my god. No. No. I'll see you guys in a month.